Let us pray. We praise you, God, for you are the beautiful creator, more vast and more ancient than the universe, who is also God, Emmanuel, intimately with us yesterday, today, and forever. Our human ideals pale in comparison to your absolute perfect goodness, justice, beauty, and love. We sense these ideals exist because you are our creator, yet perfection in goodness, justice, beauty, and love eludes us because we have fallen away from you. Although we try to reflect you, we are dull, cloudy mirrors, dusted, streaked, and cracked with our selfishness, laziness, and apathy. The darkness in us and in our broken world are the result of our sins, our falling away from you. Forgive us for placing so many other things before you and living our lives as though you are not there. We offer you thanks because in spite of forgetting you and even acting in defiance against you, you provided the way for us to be redeemed and reborn to reflect you clearly. Christ came to save us from our worst selves. Through him, we can experience perfect goodness, justice, beauty, and love. Through him, we have the privilege to partner with you, our holy God, to bring your perfect kingdom into this broken world. We are especially thankful for the ways you are working in our Autumn Down community. Thank you for providing our new senior pastor and EM pastor. We are so excited and blessed by their presence and know that they are the answer to so many faithful prayer warriors in our church. Thank you for these new leaders and give them an extra portion of your wisdom, grace, courage, and love. Thank you for all of our pastors, staff, leaders, and volunteers who perform tasks both seen and unseen who love and serve this church so diligently, joyfully, and lovingly. My faith is strengthened by, their, by working alongside my brothers and sisters and witnessing how you are faithfully working in their lives. Grant us the courage to bring a bit of heaven, not only in our church, but also in all the communities we have influence, in our homes, families, schools, businesses, workplaces. Help us in the big and small choices in our lives to be your ambassadors. Remind us that you are walking with us and often working in ways we can't see. Give us faith to know you are alive and working for our good and for the good of all. Grant us courage to be generous with our time, resources, and talents. Help us to care for the forgotten in our society and be gracious and patient with those you call us to love. Help us not to grow weary in doing good, but allow us to draw strength and endurance in you and discover your amazing peace and joy as we live out your purpose for our lives. We also intercede for those who are sick and those caring for the sick. Allow them to feel your presence and hear your voice as they travel the often unknown and scary valley of illness. Let your healing hands be on them and bring peace that transcends understanding to their spirit. You are the awesome and mysterious God in heaven who poured out everything for us and also walks intimately with us. As we walk with you, Transform us to properly reflect your perfect goodness, justice, beauty, and love in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
오늘 설교 말씀 듣기 전에 몇 가지 안내 말씀이 있어서 제가 좀 안내해 드리겠습니다 먼저 우리 오늘 특신 마지막 날인데요 매일매일 쏟아주시는 또 은혜에 너무 감사드립니다 오늘 또 특별히 교육부와 마지막 날 같이 예배드리고 또 축복기도 이렇게 마무리 했어서 더 뜻깊고 의미 있는 것 같습니다 그래서 밑에 간식도 잘 준비되어 있고 오늘 찬양도 너무 은혜스럽고 아, 잘 준비됐고 다잘된것 같습니다 아, 여러분들 파마도 잘된것 같고 예, 뭐 안된게 하나도 없는 것 같아요 예, 다잘된것 같습니다 아, 광고 말씀 하나는 그 집회 기간 동안 오늘이 마지막 날이기 때문에 내일은 예, 새벽 예배도 없고 예, 저녁 예배도 없습니다 이렇게 말씀드렸는데도 꼭 한두 분꼭 오시는 분이 있으시더라고요 예, 작년에도 있었어요 그래서 다시 말씀드리지만 오늘이 예, 마지막 날입니다 내일 새벽 기도에도 없습니다 아, 그리고 간식이 밑에 준비되어 있으니까 축복기도 끝난 대로 예, 받으시는 대로 내려가서 친교 나누시다가 예, 가시면 아, 되겠습니다 아, 축도 끝나는 대로 가정별로 축복기도 이제 목회자들이 아, 같이 기도하는 시간 갔는데 아, 많이 오셨기 때문에 좀 질서대로 순서대로 좀 해야 할 필요가 있는 것 같아요 같아요. 그래서 가정별로 나오시는데 먼저 어 여기 가운데 두줄 뒤에서부터 이제 안내해드리는 대로 하시면 되는데 어 가운데 두줄 뒤에서부터 가정별로 앞으로 나오셔서 어이 목사님 다섯 분 계시거든요 그래서 다섯 분 어느 분으로 갈지는 이제 여기 안내위원들이 먼저 예 기도 받으시는 대로 계속 이렇게 안내해드립니다 꼭 굳이 어떤 목사님에게만 받고 싶다 그러신 분들은 지금부터 기도하십시오 예, <웃음> 여러분에게 초이스가 없습니다. 그냥 기도 순서대로 이렇게 무조건 보내드릴 테니까 예, 그렇게 해서 가정별로 기도 카드 아, 준비해 오셨죠. 혹시 기도 카드 필요하신 분 있으시면 지금 말씀해 주세요. 혹시 안 가져오셨거나 아니면 예, 지금이라도 좀 쓰고 싶으신 분들은 예, 준비돼 있으니까 뒤에 안내위원에게 말씀해 주시면 기도 카드 지금이라도 작성하셔서 다시 말씀드리지만 가운데로 오시는데 뒤에서부터 여기 가운데 두 줄부터 뒤에서부터 그러니까 다 일일이 오실 필요 없고요 앞에 분들 이제 끝나시는 거 보시고 그것도 안내위원들이 이제 일어서시라고 이렇게 안내해 드릴 테니까 너무 기다리지 마시고 또 기도하는 동안에도 계속 우리 찬양팀이 계속 찬양할 겁니다 그러니까 찬양 같이 하시고 기도하시면서 우리 신년 특심 마지막 또 내일 토요일인데 뭐이 밤이 새도록 예, 같이 기도하면 어떻습니까? 그러니까 여유 있게 기다리시면서 기도하시면서 찬양하시면서 그렇게 기다리시고 가운데 줄이 끝나고 나면 안내들이 양쪽 끝에 뒤에 줄부터 바깥으로 오시면 안 되고요 가운데로 오셔서 그리고 나가시는 쪽은 무조건 맨 왼쪽 오른쪽 끝입니다. 나가시는 통로 여기서 기도받으신 분들은 맨 끝으로 여기서 기도받으신 분들은 저 왼쪽 맨 끝으로. 네, 그렇게 해서 바깥으로 나가시도록, 맨 바깥으로 나가시도록, 하여간 안내해 주시는 대로, 그렇게, 아, 인도하시, 받으시면 되고요. 이 기도 카드는 특별히 우리 목회자들만 봅니다. 예, 어느 누구도 안 보고, 우리 목사님들만 볼 테니까, 걱정 마시고, 예, 내시고, 기도 받으시고, 기도 카드를 양쪽 끝에 기도함에다 넣고 가시는 겁니다. 기도 받으시고, 직접 여러분들이 넣고, 그렇게 가시면 되겠습니다. 오늘은, 어, 세만 목사님께서 먼저 말씀 전해주시고, 그 다음에 우리 개재 목사님께서 말씀 전해주시겠습니다. tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, would you make this preaching something that helps heal generations so that we can be your people. These things we pray in Christ's name. Uh, during the nights of revival from Monday to Thursday, I got to spend some fun hours hanging out with first graders through fifth graders. First graders through fifth graders are very fun because they're very honest. Yesterday, a second grader told me, Pastor Sam, you're fat. And I was like, oh, it hurts so much. But it reminded me, that's why children's ministry is more fun. It keeps you alert, keeps you on your toes. 
I had a lot of fun doing a lot of crafting games, and it reminded me of how much fun I had with my daughter when she was that age. I remember I had some fun with her, but I ruined a lot of potentially fun moments because I couldn't stop myself from saying stuff like, you have to study more. I was like, I shouldn't say it. But I couldn't stop myself. I said, you have to study more. You have to work harder. Why can't you be more polite? Why can't you be more like that person? And the words I spoke and the way I spoke would sometimes make her not trust me and not like me. She would sometimes say, I hate you. <laughs> and after making mistakes and feeling regret, I used to wonder, why am I like this? Why am I so demanding? Why am I so worried? Why am I so competitive? And the answer is, I say the things that were said to me. I speak what I heard. I speak to my daughter, I realized, in the same way my parents, especially my mother, used to speak to me. I want to share with you a poem which describes how I repeat many of my mom's mistakes. I used to write a lot of poems for girls, and none of those poems were good, but I wrote one poem thinking about my mom, and I think this poem is pretty good, so please, uh, please listen. The title of this poem is Mom's Voice, Mama's Voice. She would say, memorize them facts, maintain that figure, do hard, go fast, live your life with rigor. And I count on that voice, wake up to that voice, I march double time, twice as long to that voice. Mom's the voice of a nation. She nags with nine lives, and it makes me wonder what thought she has planted inside. Where did I start, and where does she end? All I know is that I have to keep up with my friends. I can't not live this life, nor embrace it in full. I can't figure out if you're a curse or a tool. Your voice becomes mine as I parent my daughter. Our choices align much more than the other. I meant to tell her, be brave and be true, but I brought out the things that I overheard from you. Always work harder than any around. Bow at least twice to the elders in town. Carry your secrets with you to the grave. Night offers to help. This will make you a slave. Mom's the voice of my conscience. It speaks even in my sleep. The reason for my habits and the company I keep and even as I mock the extremes of her parenting, I repeat the process that makes us unrelenting. Mama's voice. My mom is wonderful in many ways. She'll be like cutting up fruit when she tells me to get to work. But that doesn't mean she's perfect, even though she's wonderful. I'm grateful for many things that she did for me and still does for me, but I mourn that I am making the same mistakes that she made, especially in how I communicate with my daughter. A sad truth is that the hurtful things that we heard, it usually becomes the hurtful things that we say. And this is true for all of us. When people dump their anxious and angry and cynical thoughts on us, it creates a storm in our heart that confuses and disorients and even depresses us. Verse 14 tells us the impact of these words. We become like infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. The words of the world, it hurts us. Our moms, they heard about Omtina's story, Omma Chingu Adel, and they passed on those stories about how the only way to succeed is to be better than everyone else. And this didn't make us just feel inferior or just give us insane amounts of stress. This became the way that we ended up speaking to our friends and the people around us. And our dads, they heard the words of the world mocking them for their accent. They heard comments that made them feel like they're not good enough. And they took out their fear and frustrations on us and made us feel like we weren't good enough. And it's not like they were consciously trying to make us depressed, but what they heard, they said, and we heard it, and we would say it to our siblings and to our friends. The sad thing is, even if our parents apologize, and, and my parents apologized, the damage is still done. Because now we learn to hide our needs, despise weakness, 
and become hyper-competitive because that's the way they raised us. And the saddest thing is that the cycle will continue. As we heard it, we will speak it. We will one day be parents of children, and we will find ourselves telling them, not in so many words, but I find myself saying this, you're not good enough. You have to be better. Why would I say that? But I do. And the next generation of kids will cry, and they'll yell at us, I disagree, and I'm never going to be like you. But like infants, blown and tossed by the waves, none of them is strong enough to be what they want to be on their own. On our own, we can't swim against the current. The storm overwhelms us, and we become the product of what people say to us. However, the good news is in verse 13, that God intends for us to be different from the way that we were raised. God will keep working on us until we are reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. It means that God is patiently working. Even in the stillness, he's working. Even right now, he is working. He never stops working, amen? And he is working to make us more mature, to be more like Christ. Christ knows that he is the beloved son of God, and that allows him to be compassionate and gentle and life-giving to people around him. And God is patiently working to make us more like that. And we're able to change to be more like Jesus when we hear something different. We change and our lives begin to speak more encouragement to others when we hear the gospel. In verses 11 and 12, which are not part of today's passage, it tells us that God sends people to preach and to teach and to prophesy and to pray over us. And through these people that we meet at church, what we're hearing begins to change so that what we say changes so that our relationship and our life change. God is changing hearts through preaching. As we hear the Word of God explained, our hearts receive faith from the Holy Spirit, and we begin to believe the good news. And God changes hearts through praise. Sometimes I can hear when I come to the office. Sometimes when I come to the office, especially after a late night, I'm not happy. But then I come to the office and I hear coming from small chapel the sounds of children singing praise. And it drives away darkness. It drives away tiredness. You know what I'm talking about, right? The power of praise when you hear it to change your heart. And God changes hearts through prayer. When you receive prayer, the identity that was spoken over you by your parents and by your teachers and by your bosses and people in authority, these hurtful words that defined you get replaced by the words of prayer as someone speaks the truth of God over you. And when you hear it, you start thinking and believing and becoming what God says you are. Amen? Once we hear this truth, verse 15 says that we will begin to speak the truth. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. So you should come to church to hear the good news so that you can change and begin to speak the good news towards others. The good news that when you mess up, you don't have to hide or try to make up for it. You can just say to God, God, I'm sorry that I've sinned against you. You can say to people, I'm sorry that I've sinned against you without hiding. You can say the truth that one test does not define you. Many of the heroes in the Bible, like Job or Moses, they only reach their potential in their latter years. So expect that God is always tutoring, always counseling, always patiently working with you so that your best days are yet to come. And the truth is that your friends are not your competition. The disciples, when they were just beginning to walk with Jesus, they always thought that each other was their competition, and they always tried to get more honor than the people next to them. But when they understood how much Jesus loved them after the resurrection, 
they were able to be free to honor and serve each other. We speak these truths to each other so that we can become a healthy body of Christ. And then what we hear from God begins to affect the way we speak to each other so that instead of only hearing mama's voice, I begin to hear the heavenly father's voice, the one who sings over us when we are anxious. And once in a while, I can at least be a good dad saying the right thing, the loving thing, speaking the gospel in love. And that's when my daughter says, hey, I had a bad dream. Can you pray for me? May those things be what we hear as what we speak changes. At this time, we'll be having our youth presentation and body worship.
Jesus.